May God bless you all. In this catechesis, or rather I would say sharing, that I'm going to share with you today, is about St. Francis of Assisi. Now, we know already that the providential role that the Order of Friars Minor, together with the Order of Preachers, founded respectively by St. Francis of Assisi and St. Dominic of Guzman, had a powerful influence in the renewal of the Church of their time. Now, St. Francis is the figure of an authentic giant of holiness, who continues to fascinate very many people of every age and every religion. But giant not because he was holy without sin, but because he recognized his sin and he recognized that he, need, he needed God's grace. In Paradiso, Canto 11, we find this. A son is born to the world. With these words in the Divine Comedy, the greatest Italian poet, Dante Alighieri, alludes to Francis' birth, which occurred at the end of 1181, or the beginning of 1182, in Assisi. Belonging to a wealthy family, his father was a textile merchant. Francis enjoyed a carefree adolescence and youth, cultivating the chivalrous ideals of the time. He was, when he was 20, he took part in a military campaign and was taken prisoner. He became ill and was released. After his return to Assisi, a slow process of spiritual conversion began in him, which led him to abandon gradually the worldly lifestyle he had practiced until then. Striking at this time are the famous episodes of the meeting with the leper, to whom Francis, getting off his horse, gave the kiss of peace and the message of the crucifix in the little church of San Damiano. Three times the crucified Christ came to life and said to him, Go, Francis, and repair my church in ruins. This simple event of the word of the Lord, heard in the church of San Damiano, hides a profound, a profound symbolism. Immediately, St. Francis is called to repair this little church, but the ruined state of this building is a symbol of the tragic and disturbing situation of the church itself at that time, with a superficial faith that does not form and transform life, with a clergy lacking in zeal, with the cooling off of love, an interior destruction of the church that also implied a decomposition of unity with the birth of heretical movements. However, at the center of this church in ruins is the crucified and he speaks. He calls to renewal. He calls Francis to manual labor to repair concretely the little church of San Damiano, symbol of the more profound call to renew the church of Christ itself with his radical faith and his enthusiastic love for Christ. This event, which probably occurred in 12505, make one think of another similar event that happened in 1207, the dream of Pope Innocent III. He saw in a dream that the Basilica of St. John Lateran, the mother church of all churches, was collapsing and a small and insignificant religious supported the church with his shoulders so that it would not collapse. It is interesting to note, on one hand, that it is not the Pope who helps so that the Church will not collapse, but a small and insignificant religious whom the Pope recognizes in Francis who visited him. Innocent III was a powerful Pope of great theological learning as well as great political power. 
Yet, it was not for him to renew the church, but for the small and insignificant religious. It is St. Francis, called by God. On the other hand, however, it is important to note that St. Francis does not renew the church with, without or against the Pope, but in, only in communion with him. The two realities go together. The successor of Peter, the bishops, the church, founded on the succession of the apostles, and the new charism that the Holy Spirit created at this movement to renew the church. True renewal grows together. Let us return to St. Francis' life. Because his father, Bernardone, reproved him for excessive generosity to the poor, Francis, with a symbolic gesture and before the Bishop of Assisi, stripped himself of his clothes, thus intending to renounce his paternal inheritance. As, at the moment of creation, Francis had nothing but only the life that God gave him and into whose hands he entrusted himself. Then he lived as a hermit until in 1208 another fundamental event took place in the journey of his conversion. Hearing a passage of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus' discourse to the apostles sent on mission, Francis feels he is called to live in poverty and to dedicate himself to preaching. Other companions associated themselves to him, and in 1209 he went to Rome to submit to the Pope the project of a new form of Christian life. He was given a paternal reception by the great pontiff, who, enlightened by the Lord, intuited the divine origin of the movement awakened by Francis. The Poverello of Assisi had understood that every Christ charism given by the Holy Spirit is placed at the service of the body of Christ, which is the Church. Hence, he always acted in full communion with the ecclesiastical authority. In the life of saints, there is no opposition between a prophetic charism and the charism of government, and if some tension is created, they must wait patiently for the times of the Holy Spirit. Father God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' blood, and the Holy Spirit, thank you for the gift of St. Francis. Help us so that, like him, we embrace the Lord and we submit to his will, whatever it is. Most of all, Lord, help us through Jesus' name, through Jesus' blood and the Holy Spirit, to really let you, let you lead our lives. Especially, make us understand that holiness is a slow process of spiritual conversion. Mary, Mother of God, intercede for us in, in front of your beloved Son, Jesus, to understand this very important thing in life, in spiritual life, that our holiness or God's holiness in us occurs in stages and is a slow process. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And may the Lord Almighty bless you and protect you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.